Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session on Batch. Um, this is a program that we've heard over and over again how this does wonders for the efficiency in bookstores. And I'm here with my co ED, Kristen, and Brian from PMBA, and Heather. And um, if you have any if you have any questions during the presentation, drop them into the chat and we'll answer them as we can. And I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Nathan. Unmute myself there. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us here this afternoon to learn more about Batch. My name is Nathan Halter, and I am the US program manager uh, for Batch. Um, when you use Batch, I'm kind of your main contact for everything, getting set up, troubleshooting, onboarding, questions, problems. Uh, I'll be the person that you contact uh, for an answer. Um, just a little bit of background about myself. You know, I, uh, I've worked at indie bookstores um, and I worked at ABA for a number of years. Um, so I've, you know, been in, you know, with the indie bookstore industry, uh, I guess, near 20 years now. Um, with me today are two current batch users. We have Mary Williams from Skylight Books in Los Angeles and Christine Longmuir from Two Rivers Books in Portland. Um, Mary, would you uh, like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Mary uh, with Skylight. I'm the general manager. Uh, so at our store, um, we use Batch with a large number of people. We have a team of receivers who use Batch as well as a bookkeeper and myself. So I can speak to those sort of um, applications across a larger group of people today. Christine? Um, I'm Christine Longmuir. My bookstore is in uh, Portland, Oregon, Two Rivers Books. Um, I am much smaller. Uh, I'm the main user of Batch, um, and mostly I use it uh, for bill paying and accounting purposes. Um, but I think the most important thing is it's free to booksellers. <laughs> uh, thanks, Christine. Thanks, Mary. Um, here's the plan for today. I'm going to provide a little bit of background about Batch and what it is and how it works. Um, after my intro, uh, I'm going to pass things over to Mary and Christine, who will share their perspective as booksellers using Batch in their stores and how it helps them and hopefully how it can help you. Um, we'll have time at the end for Q&A. Uh, during our, our talk, please feel free to type questions in the chat as you think of them. Uh, there's a chance we might answer them through the course of the presentation, uh, but if we don't, we'll be sure to answer them at the end. Um, let's, so let's dive in. Uh, first, a little bit of background about Batch. Uh, Batch is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Booksellers Association over in the UK and launched about 25 years ago. The BEA is uh, sort of their version of our American Booksellers Association, so it's definitely a bookseller-focused endeavor. Um, it's been quite a long process bringing it over to the US. Uh, personally, I remember first hearing about the possibility of Batch it must have been 2012, 2013. Um, it took a little bit longer than expected, but we did finally launch in the US in February of 2020. Uh, so the big question is, what is Batch? Um, so if you're not familiar with it, it's a business tool designed uh, specifically for independent bookstores to electronically store and organize invoices and prepare publisher payments. Uh, that might sound a bit dry and maybe not too exciting at first, <coughs> but consider everything you have to do uh, with your invoices from the time the shipment arrives until you actually pay it. All the filing, organizing, printing, et cetera. There's a million and one things that you're all doing with uh, your invoices. Uh, most stores I talk to spend a lot of time and payroll on paperwork, uh, trying to be organized, trying to have everything really accurate, have their information in one place, being up to date. And it can be really, really difficult given the number of invoices you're all getting on a daily basis and the different ways that you're receiving all those invoices. And as you know, uh, the same amount of work goes into you know, processing an invoice and paying an invoice that's for a single book for $4.31 as, as it is for an invoice that has 100 books and is $1,500. Uh, so you all just have a ton of invoices. And using Batch is going to help alleviate a lot of those difficulties. Plus, as Christine mentioned, the Batch is free to use. We don't charge booksellers anything to use the service. 
So that's what batch is, uh, but I do want to talk a bit about how it works. Uh, batch isn't a very complicated tool. While it can do a few different things, the primary function of batch is going to be to store your invoices um, so you can access them wherever and whenever you want and to prepare payments to the publishers. Once you sign up for batch, publishers are going to begin to transmit via EDI your invoices and credits to your batch portal and batch stores the information for you to access. Uh, the publishers send the invoices and credits within 24 hours of them being raised. So the information on batch is always up to date and matches what the publishers have in their AR systems. So I'm going to share my screen uh, for a second. Um, sorry, just a second here. Great, so hopefully you can all see my screen. When you log into Batch, we're going to organize the information in such a way where you're immediately going to see what's due uh, this month for each of the publishers. So when you log into Batch right now, uh, I'm on a test site and we're seeing all these invoices, all these outstanding invoices that are due by the end of January. And this information is going to be there when you log into Batch on the first of the month. So there's no waiting for statements to arrive or anything like that. Um, you can begin working on preparing your payments as soon as you want. And again, this is all just invoices that are due now, but there are of course ways to see invoices that are due later. But this is the information that most stores are looking for when, they, when they're using Batch. What's, what do they owe now? And you can see what you owe now immediately. And because the, inform it, because the publishers are, because what's on Batch is mirroring what's, uh, you know, what's in the publisher systems, uh, it is reliable and accurate as well. Um, so as I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the main thing that you're going to be doing on Batch is preparing payments. And the process for preparing payments is very, very simple. Um, you go to your list of transactions, which you can access by just clicking on the, these hyperlinks. And you'll see your, all your invoices and your credits all in one place and just using these radio buttons on the left-hand side of the screen, you just go down and you, you know, authorize the invoices and the credits that uh, you wanna pay. And you just, I'm gonna mark a few there. You update the status and let's see. Let's go back to our current period summary. And so you've authorized all your invoices and credits. Um, just with clicking radio buttons, you come to uh, this screen here, we get a remittance total, and then you just send batch that one single total. Um, you, you maintain complete control over everything. Uh, batch never dictates what gets paid, and we will never remit anything you haven't authorized us to remit. And so after you authorize your invoices and credits, you send batch a single payment and we pass it along to the publisher. So if you, know, if you sent us this $8,600, we would send 7912 to Macmillan, 733.39 to Harper, and you wouldn't have to do, you, know, you wouldn't have to send us two separate payments or anything like that. One huge advantage of paying through batch is it's going to eliminate payment discrepancies. You know, I've heard from many stores who have had issues because the publisher applied their payment to the wrong invoices and credits and trying to resolve that can be a re real mess. Um, I've heard stores who have been trying to resolve issues with the publishers for 18 months and it still it, it isn't fixed. Um, that simply doesn't happen with Batch because when we're sending the information along to the publishers, we're sending them you know, as digital files that the publishers, you know, they take that file and they auto allocate it to your account, which is clearing uh, those invoices and credits. And so it's always accurate. Um, so that's how batch works in very general terms. You know, it does a couple of other things as well. You can, you know, integrate with QuickBooks to eliminate uh, data entry. You can make claims for damages and uh, shortages um, uh, with, uh, without sending emails or anything like that. Um, and you, you can use batch to look up information. You can use it in the receiving process to reconcile invoices, uh, which will make your, the payment process much easier down, down the line. Um, when we talk to booksellers, 
they've identified the four major benefits of batch as, let's see here, batch saves time uh, in a variety of different ways, preparing payments, data entry, reconciliation, things like that. Batch is convenient. Everything's going to be in one place for you. Batch is accurate, not only with the information that comes in, uh, with it's accurate in the remittances, and it's also accurate if you integrate with QuickBooks, you know, no entry errors, no missing invoices or anything like that. And Batch is also flexible in the ways that, um, in, in that a wide variety of stores can use it. So I wanna turn it over to Mary and, uh, and Christine. And so Christine, I, I was hoping that you could chat a little bit about, you know, how Batch saves you time uh, in your work processes and workflow. Yeah, so um, I love Batch. Uh, it saves a ton of time. Um, you know, not I don't have to sit down. So we're a small store. We I like to say we're two ladies and a teenager that run the store. Um, at fifteen hundred square feet, we sell books and yarn. Um, and uh, Batch just saves me a ton of time from entering every single invoice into QuickBooks. And like Nathan was saying, there's a ton of human error when you're manually entering, you know, if I'm standing at the counter trying to run the store and enter invoices, there's obviously going to be mistakes and um, there aren't with batch. Um, I, I really love it. It saves me a huge amount of time. It also saves me money when I have to pay the bookkeeper to do certain things. It's all there because Batch integrates with QuickBooks in such a lovely way. Um, we haven't had any issues with the integration. Um, I do wanna get better at using Batch for uh, returns, uh, but the other great thing that saves me time is um, we were never applying the credits to at the right time. And now I don't even have to worry about it. I just, if there's a credit, I just click the radio button and apply it to the invoices that I want. It's just a huge, huge help. And now there's the um, batch has a what to pay by week, which is even more helpful. Um, I really, really love it. I really, really want Hachette to sign up for it. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Um, just one note about the credits as well. I, I like to um, I like to say that batch is even more current than uh, the statement that you're receiving. Because when you receive a statement from the vendor, there are timestamps. Like you might get a statement on January 15th that was prepared January 15th. But let's say you're preparing your payment on today, January 24th. Um, in that nine days, you might have received credits that aren't on your statement that you don't know you can use. But those credits are on batch and you can apply them right away. You don't have to wait for your next statement to see those credits to apply. Um, Mary, I uh, wanted to ask you this, the same question about um, how does batch save you time? Um, yeah, it's the time savings alone make it worth using batch on our end. They're absolutely enormous. Um, being able, so I can see in the chat, there's some discussion about which publishers. Um, so it's Macmillan, Harper, and PRH are on batch. For us, even if it was just PRH, it would be such a time savings because they send so many invoices. Um, so being able to download daily, once a week, however often you want your invoices from batch straight into QuickBooks, your credit memos, import as credit memos, your invoices as invoices, all the information is accurate. So you don't have that thing where you start to go numb entering 50 invoices. Um, they just, they're just right. Um, so that is absolutely huge. Um, for us, we also um, our receivers save time um, because they are able to report damages on batch um, and submit for the credit right there. So there's no sitting on the phone with the 800 number or however it is that that publisher wants to hear about damages. They just submit it electronically. It's approved electronically. And then the credit downloads in your next download the next time uh, as soon as it's been posted. Um, and then a huge one for us, I don't know how other stores do this, but in the olden days, um, our receivers would receive a box. They would give the packing slip to our bookkeeper who would manually match it to the invoice to make sure that it had been received and then manually data enter it. Um, there's no need to match packing slips anymore. The receivers just check a radio button when an invoice has been received. Um, if anything's been short or damaged, they do that themselves. So you'll see, um, 
you can kind of see it on uh, Nathan's screen, but when you go to authorize an invoice to be paid, you can see whether or not it's been received without having to do any matching at all. There's a verified um, radio button. that's one of those purple columns. I'm, I'm um, sharing my screen, screen right now. Uh, what Mary's referring to is what we have our list of transactions and we have this authorized. That's when you're selecting what invoices you wanna pay. And what uh, the receivers at Skylight do is they go, they find the invoice they're looking for, and they're just going to verify that invoice uh, under this V column here, and they update it, and that lets the who's ever paying the bills know that they that lets them know this invoice is good, ready to be paid whenever you want to pay it. Yeah, it's literally two clicks. I mean, to to verify it. what you saw was was the whole thing. Um, it's really easy for them. We have nine people trained and receiving because we're like a very cross-trained happy store um, and it's no no trouble at all getting them to learn those two clicks it's really easy so that's a huge time savings as well um, so the next thing that i wanted to talk about is the convenience of using batch and um, mary i was hoping you could uh, lead off with this yeah, so um, in addition to everything just being electronically at your fingertips, um, there's a couple other little cases where it's more convenient. Um, one is, again, on the receiving end, I think batch is underappreciated for receivers, so that's why I'm kind of leaning into that topic. Um, sometimes you get a box with no paperwork in it, um, which I'm sure we've all had, and it's pretty annoying, and it happens surprisingly often. In batch, all you have to do, you can do a quick search for an ISBN in that box and pull up all the invoices for that ISBN and find the one that relates to your box and download it. Um, so it's really easy. You don't have all those, I don't know about all you guys, but we don't love those publisher biz websites. They're just kind of annoying. Um, so this for three publishers, all in one place. You just put in the ISBN, see your invoice, um, download it, and then they have that to work off of um, for price changes or anything else that they want to double check. Um, and then the other convenience is it's a super easy way to see uh, your projected cash flow. So Christine mentioned um, briefly, and I'll just highlight again, that you can see your um, upcoming invoices by week. So you can kind of see when it is that you're going to have that spike in invoices due and plan ahead. I wish we were better about planning ahead, but, um, but that certainly makes it easier than um, QuickBooks. Also, because as Nathan said, everything is immediate so you're not waiting for that statement as soon as it ships you have the invoice in batch and you can download it to quickbooks so you don't have to wait around for it to be received matched data entered um, to see where your future payables are so that's also pretty helpful yeah, i just uh, shared my screen here just to show you all the future uh mary and christine both mentioned it this is the future by week summary so it's organized by uh due date basically and you can you know, see your outstanding amount. So you can, you know, hopefully it can help you, you know, plan a, a cash flow. Um, just want to take a quick, we had a, let me stop sharing here. A uh, couple of quick questions um, from Clark. How do you ensure that your cost information is correct in your POS system if you use, if you use batch? Um, Christine or Mary, do you have any insight into that? Um, in terms of what you're doing, or is it just a matter of, you know, whatever's on the the like the invoice that you receive from the vendor matching that against what's on batch, and that's kind of the way that you're ensuring the cost information is correct. That's yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Oh, I think we're going to say the same thing, which is that it doesn't interact with our point of sale system. Um, so pretty much whatever we were doing to receive in iMerchant, which is the software that we use for POS remains unchanged. Um, the difference is just that finding that paperwork more easily and then verifying that the shipment was received more easily. So it doesn't impact the actual receiving and iMerchant process at all. Yeah, we only, we cross check the cost when we receive the item. So it, it doesn't interact with batch. It doesn't really have much to do with the cost of goods. I mean, we know that the discounts are correct on the invoice and the discount that we're entering is correct. Um, but yeah. So Christine, Mary was, uh, we, we were talking, Mary was talking about like the benefit batches convenience and everything. And I was, I, I was, was wondering what you, uh, what you want to say. Um, it, 
it is really convenient, but it's also, I will admit that I am a terrible bookkeeper and you do not have to be a bookkeeper or a genius to use batch like you do to use QuickBooks. <laughs> um, it, it really is easier than QuickBooks to find what you're looking for in terms of what's due, who, who, you know, who needs to get paid right away. Um, I just, it's, yeah, it's super convenient. I, I love it. A note about the QuickBooks integration. So when you do integrate batch with QuickBooks, what that looks like, uh, it can integrate with both uh, the desktop and the online versions of QuickBooks. Um, and what, what you can do is it can it, it's going to transmit your invoicing credits from batch to QuickBooks. And then it can also, it can also send a remittance update. So it's going to uh, create bill payments for each of your vendors in QuickBooks, and it's going to mark those invoices as paid and apply the credits correctly. Um, so I know, I know for I, for me at least, QuickBooks can be kind of uh, hard to use or hard to navigate and make sure the credits are applied correctly. So it is it is is good good about that. Um, right now. Uh, QuickBooks is the only accounting software that Batch is integrated with. Um, we, there are um, a, a number of ways to download information to like spreadsheets. Um, so if your accounting package has like a, a you know, a, a invoice upload option uh, from like spreadsheets or something, then some do, um, that that might be, might be an option. But um, right now it's, it's just QuickBooks. Um, so the next way that batch can uh, benefit is the fact that it uh, batch is accurate. Um, so Christine, I was hoping that you could lead off here. Yeah, so accurate is exactly, <laughs> it's, it's great, right? Because if you're manually entering invoices into QuickBooks and you have a series of invoices that are 37, 12, and then 312, and you, you, you just transpose the numbers that never happens. It's always, you know, electronically sent to you and to batch and the numbers um, are always right. It's just really, a, it's a relief, right? When you, when you're trying to balance well in QuickBooks and you have that like missing number, you're like, why am I off? And then you have to go through everything and try to figure out where you transposed a number. It's frustrating. Um, and that's why batch is so helpful. One second here. And, and Mary, I was hoping that you could kind of speak to the accuracy of batch. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100% with everything Christine just said. On top of that, it makes um, communication with publishers a lot more streamlined. Um, we just had a case earlier this month where we were on hold with a major publisher who isn't on batch for a week and a half for a check we'd sent three weeks before that they just hadn't deposited. And I guess they found it in their mail stack because eventually they took us off hold and told us they got the payment, but it was kind of a nightmare. Um, also, uh, you know, when it's people and not electronic, it's like I'd send an email every day for four days, then I'd get a reply. That kind of thing just never happens with batch publishers anymore. You submit it um, via bank transfer, they get it. The bill payment stub information is like, it's automatic for us and for them. Um, so you're not uh, trying to prove that you sent a check that they claim they haven't received. Um, so that kind of thing, the accuracy between us and publishers has been dramatically improved um, since we started using Batch. I mean, truthfully, I don't know why all the publishers aren't using Batch because it really limits the amount of, you know, customer service that the publisher has to do when something is wrong. And, you know, it's it's just not wrong. <laughs> Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is um, sort of the flexibility of, of Batch. Um, and Mary, I was hoping that you could lead off here with the flexibility part. Sure. So, um, you know, I, I recognize a lot of the names in this call were a variety of different size stores with different ways of doing things. And I think one of the things is you can, aside from the one thing that everyone who uses Batch does, which is remit payment via batch, you can use as many features as you want or not. So for us, we found a lot of great applications for our receiving team. But if that's just like one thing you don't want to deal with yet, don't worry about it. Um, they can keep doing business as usual. Um, they can keep calling in their damages. It's, you know, it's fine. You don't have to do all that stuff. 
um, as long as you're, you know, downloading your invoices and doing your payment. So, um, yeah, for us, like I mentioned at the top of the call, we have a pretty large number of people um, using Batch here at the store. And for us, that really streamlines um, the communications within our own interior departments. Um, so for us, that's the big flexibility um, benefit. And I would say flexibility wise, you know, just between the two of us, you can tell we're two entirely different size stores and batch fits and works for both kinds of stores, you know, very big to very small, um, you know, and you're inspiring me because I'm going to make our uh, receivers now use batch. Um, but because it's, you know, calling in damages does take time. And if it can be just done right at that moment, that would be great. <clears throat> That's great. Um, Christine, Mary, thank you for, for everything, uh, for addressing all this. Uh, before we get to some, some Q&A part, I, I did want to go over uh, just a few things. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, let's see here. Go. There we go. So we conducted a survey recently of batch users, and this is the average time saved by using batch per month. Um, uh, stores are saving eight hours per month on preparing payments, six hours per month on uh, data entry, not date entry. I should probably proofread better. Uh, three hours per month saved on paperwork and three hours per month saved on miscellaneous tasks. Uh, that's 20 hours per month uh, saved. Some so stores save more, some stores save less. Um, so there, there is a lot of time saved. And um, so it's, you know, it, it, it is, even though we have just the three publishers, it is very uh, valuable. And when we do get all the publishers on, those numbers will even go up higher. And uh, the way that uh, when, when we did the survey, it was kind of, you know, how much time are you saving, you know, kind of, you know, by working on batch compared to when you weren't on batch and everything. So that's kind of the framework of, of those numbers. Um, and I also uh, wanted to address some, let me see, uh, some frequently asked questions. Um, and some of the questions that, that I, I plan to address some frequently asked questions and some of them came up in the chat and are related. The first one is just about the publishers. Um, some what, There was a question in there, and how does Batch make money? Um, the glib answer is we don't, but no. Uh, the, uh, the, so the publishers um, uh, pay from their end, so the booksellers don't have to pay from their end. And there are a lot of benefits to publishers, just uh, information being correct, um, not, like much less customer service time. Uh, batch users tend to be way more current than um, non-batch users. Um, I've, I've been doing a case study where I've been interviewing bookstores and uh, numerous booksellers said that they pay batch publishers before they pay non-batch publishers. And they order more from batch publishers than non-batch publishers just because it's much easier to do. Um, and so the big question is we have three publishers, why don't we have more? Um, we certainly do want more. Um, the, the main obstacle that we've heard from publishers is simply the number of bookstores we have on board right now. We have about 150 users, uh, which is a decent number, but it's, you know, it's just a, a, a fraction of the you know, independent bookstore market. Um, so publishers just want to see more bookstores on before they commit time, money, and uh, resources to integrating with Batch. Um, and that's obviously where you come in. The more bookstores we have on board, the easier it is uh, going to be for us to get publishers on board. And you know, I, I, a common thing that, that comes up that we hear from bookstores is, you know, why not wait uh, for more publishers to come on board before joining Batch? A uh, couple answers. It, you know, Batch is free. There's no risk to trying it. Um, there's not a, you know, there's not a huge learning curve to batch. It's pretty simple to use. So you're not going to spend a ton of training time, um, or anything like that. And, 
uh, given its flexibility, it's not like there has to be, there doesn't necessarily have to be staff wide training for everything. Um, and batch, even if you're, and Mary and Christine mentioned this, even if you're using batch for just one publisher, you will see benefit from being on batch just if you're paying, uh, paying just one publisher. Um, so a couple frequently asked questions that we get just from, from users. Uh, how much does Batch cost? As we've mentioned numerous times, Batch is free. Um, does Batch replace my credit rep? Uh, nope, you're going to maintain your current relationships with all your credit reps. Batch is just a tool. They will always be your main point of contact still. Um, let's see, the other thing that I wanted to show, um, so yeah, I know, I guess this is, let's, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Brian mentioned in the chat, let them know, Susan, um, reps might get tired of hearing, at, hearing it, but word will make it back to the home office. That is absolutely correct. Uh, you know, if you're on batch and you want other publishers to be on batch, tell your reps as often as you can. So all of that, all of that said, um, want to get to some of the questions that everybody has uh, brought up uh, during the chat. Um, if I miss a question, I think I have them all in front of me. Just please let me know. Um, so a couple things. Let me see. If you uh, let me see. If you are reporting a damage and the publisher wants the book returned, does that streamline that? Um, so I can show you what the, 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 the process, the, let, I'm going to demo the, the claims process on batch. So let me share my screen so you can all get a, a look at it. Um, so let me find some. Just want to find an invoice here. So the claims process on batch is very simple. So what you would do is you would find the invoice you're looking for, hit the, hit the claim button on the batch web screen, uh, on the batch screen, maybe one system, one copy of all systems read came in damaged. You mark that, you validate the entries, and then you create the claim. That's all that you need to do from a bookseller side of things. And what that's going to do is that's going to generate a file that gets sent to the publisher they're going to process it on their end, um, and they're going to issue the credit note like they normally do. Um, when, when, if a credit note appears on batch, like the, the standard is uh, for, for publishers is donate or destroy. If they want you to do something different uh, with your books, if they want you to send them back or call tag or anything like that, they're going to contact you directly. So let, let, uh, let's see, sorry. Um, so a couple questions about uh, the setup process that we had. Uh, if I sign up for batch, will all my existing outstanding invoices show up in batch? Um, and how long does it take to get someone on board and do their outstanding invoices show up right away? And related to that, that is, do you set up batch with your bank info for payment? So, this, the, the setup process, and this is all kind of related, so I'm going to address all of them sort of at once here. Uh, the setup process is very simple. Um, let me see, I want to sh actually share something else. Uh, screen, sorry about this. Okay, setup process is you're going to fill out a contact form, and I will put the link uh, in the chat uh, in just a few moments. That's going to take you two to three minutes. After you fill out the contact form, we send you a user agreement. It takes five or 10 minutes to fill out. Uh, when it's time for you to go live, you know, you got to set up your login and everything like that, another five or 10 minutes, and then you go live. Honestly, it's about 20 to 25 minutes of work to sign up for batch and to start using it. Uh, so it, it's not it's not a huge, huge amount of time uh, that, that you're going to have to commit to the sign up process. Um, and Nathan holds your hand the whole way. <laughs> I will. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I will. Uh, I will do whatever I need to do to make sure it's a smooth onboarding process for you. Um, and so a, a couple of um, related questions uh, about the outstanding invoices. 
So it varies uh, between the publishers. We wish, we wish it was a consistent across all publishers, but they like to do things differently from each other. So uh, we work with it as best we can. Uh, when you go live with Penguin Random House, they are going to transmit all your open outstanding invoices to Batch. So you can, you know, everything's on there immediately. immediately. Harper Collins and Macmillan, from the date they, they will transmit new invoices and credits from your go live date onward. Your older open, they won't transmit your older open invoices. However, there is a caveat to that. Um, most people don't want to have two different systems going on, even if, if it's for like a temporary amount of time till everything catches up. Uh, so what, what I often do for new stores is once Macmillan and Harper start transmitting invoices, I request a current statement from Harper Collins and Macmillan for your store. Um, and there is a way for me to put that information into a spreadsheet and easily upload it so everything is on batch. So everything can get on batch eventually. It's not too much of a process or anything like that, but Penguin Random House is the only one who does it um, automatically. Um, in terms of payments, uh, the way the payment process works in batch when you're, when you're making payments, uh, right now, batch is not going to link to your bank account. We're not going to automatically draft funds or anything like that. Um, the, the reason is uh, what we've been told is US banking regulations, uh, we're a third party payment platform. We're not able to draft funds from your account um, directly. So you are going to initiate the payment on your end and you just set up an electronic transfer to our bank account. Um, and uh, what the payment process looks like in terms of remittances and everything like that, um, it's not exactly a rolling remittance. Uh, we do have scheduled remittances to the publisher where um, we remit uh, invoices and payments to the publishers every Friday morning um, and also on the last business day of the month. About 60% of stores are making one payment per month to batch. Um, and 40% of the other 40% make multiple payments. And there's a lot of different reasons. It's sometimes it's cash flow reasons where they want to spread out their, you know, payments from week to week. Uh, other times it's they want to pay one vendor one week, another vendor another week. Um, and so they 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 make uh, multiple payments. Um, so and you know, batch is per again going back to bat bat batch being flexible. It really is whatever works for you, uh, what works best for you and your workflow and how you want to want to set up your payment process to batch. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, uh, somebody, uh, Eric asked, can you see an actual invoice on batch? So what you can do is, let's see. Um, You can click on the line item detail here, which is going to bring up your invoice, uh, all the line item detail. And this is downloadable into an Excel file. Um, and everything on batch, like wherever you're at, like if you're on a transaction screen and you did a search and you have like a list of invoices that you need in Excel, we always have these download buttons that, and so everything can get opened up as an Excel file. Uh, let me see. Uh, so uh, Vereen asks, can you request a reship versus a credit? Uh, you will have to contact your credit rep to request a reship. It's, it's, not, it's not automatic. Um, uh, it won't automatically apply. Uh, that's been a big request from a lot of users for the ability to, to request a reship. And, um, you know, it's something that's kind of on our development list. Um, I, that's, that doesn't mean it's imminent or anything soon, but, you know, we are aware there's a demand for it. And I, I like to think that we'll be able to address that in the future. Um, so it's, somebody asked a question about Sage 50. Unfortunately, Batch does not integrate with Sage at this time. Um, it, it is right now we are limited to QuickBooks. Um, just, uh, for, for the simple reason that that is what the majority of stores are using. Uh, but as we get more stores and as we get more uh, demand for it, um, we do hope to develop these further integrations with other accounting uh, packages. Uh, so uh, T asks, is this all online, no downloaded software? Um, yes. So Batch is a web portal. It's all online. The only possible 
download that you'll have to do is if you use QuickBooks Desktop, um, there's a piece of software because QuickBooks Desktop is you know local to the computer it's on. Um, you do have to download a piece of software called Batch Sync, which will transmit your invoices from Batch to QuickBooks. Um, so that does have to live locally, but uh, beyond that, everything is just online. So what uh, Brian asks, would it be okay to pay a publisher outside of Batch once we're on board? Uh, this varies by publisher. Penguin Random House, no. They say when, once you're on Batch, you're going to be making your payments through Batch. Harper and Macmillan, uh, you can make payments outside of Batch directly to the publisher. Um, and there is on Batch, one of the uh, radio buttons options here is N for not paying through Batch for books. So when you make a payment outside of Batch, you mark those invoices as not paid through Batch for books. So that way they get cleared from your list of outstanding invoices and you don't uh, accidentally um, double pay them or double use the credits or, or anything like that. Uh, yes, T asked me to clarify the payment process. Uh, so the first step is you're going to authorize your, and I'm going to share my screen for this. Um, so, so you go through the process of authorizing your invoices. Um, you go to our current period summary, uh, which again lists your outstanding amounts. And after you authorize your invoices, you can come down here and see the amount that you owe to batch. So you take that amount and Whatever, whatever you know, bank you're using, you you have our you, you'll have our bank account information, our routing number, all banking information you need, and you send an electronic bank transfer uh, to Batch uh, to transfer the funds. Uh, there is no it it is weird uh, that there is no like submit payment button or anything like that, um, and that's sort of a a holdover from when Batch first launched. It was sort of you know there there was a lot of it was sort of a duplicate of what they're doing in the UK. But as we get further along the process, like the US does things a little bit different than the UK. Um, so there will probably need to be some changes made to uh, some parts of the, uh, the payment process. Um, in the UK, just to let you know, they only have one payment a month. That's always the end of the month payment. Um, so whatever is authorized at the end of the month gets uh, remitted to the publishers. Uh, whereas in the UK, we offer the, the weekly uh, remittances. Uh, let me see. I, I want to say that I got to most of the questions. I'm. Is there anything that I missed? People can raise a hand, speak up, you know, let me know what I missed. Let's see here. Oh, uh, in terms of the setup process, uh, I'm going to put some a couple links in um, in the chat here. Uh, first link is my email address. Uh, you can email me for anything. Um, I can, if you want to call, if you prefer phone. Here's my phone number. So give me a call, send me an email. Uh, so T asks if we do a three-day transfer, batch waits to get it, then submits the payment. Correct. That is, I, I would say that is the biggest hurdle that batch users have to overcome the timing. Because when we do a Friday remittance, we need the money by in our account by Wednesday evening. So we do have a payment cutoff so that we can pair everything, make sure everything is all good before we remit it on Friday morning. And getting that timing down I, is definitely the biggest pain point for batch. But you know, I would say most users, it takes a payment or two before they realize when they have to, to send the payment. Um, let's see. We have a couple links that I want to want to do here. We have batch benefits. It just is a list of all the various benefits of being on batch. Um, we have some other frequently asked questions. And finally, um, a registration, like if you're ready to get uh, start with batch, um, you can go to this contact form and that's you know that will take you a minute or two to fill out the only piece of information you might not have uh, at hand is it asks for your SAN number if you don't have your SAN if you don't know it off the top of your head just skip it 
Uh, we, we can look, I can look it up. So yeah, you don't have to go looking for it or anything like that. There's a way that I, I can look up SAN numbers. Uh, so yeah, just, just skip it and just enter all the other information that, uh, that you can enter. Um, and I, let me, I want to share my screen one more time. Um, I was having lots of issues sharing my screen before, so I'm happy that it hasn't been too terrible or laggy. Um, so if you go to batchforbooks.com, uh, we have this big orange contact us or register button. And this is the form that you fill out. Uh, you would say that you're a retailer. Uh, you would check payments here, although you don't really have to check it in. You just go down and enter the information and hit send. That is the first thing that you will do um, within a day. Uh, usually I will send you an email. I will send you the uh, user agreement and you know you don't have to fill it out right away, but you can if you want and uh, get the process uh, started. Um, one other thing about the get it going live process, we onboard activate new stores uh, every month and we do it in groups. Um, and the only kind of you know lead time that we need is we just need your user agreement and vendor account numbers. And that's part of the user agreement you can where you'll be able to provide your vendor account numbers. And uh, we just need those about two weeks before the beginning of whatever month you're going live. So if you want to go live in March, February 15th would be um, the deadline for getting that back to us. Um, Mary, raised hand. Yeah, I just wanted to add on the bank transfer thing. So um, if you have a small business bank rep for your bank, I'd really suggest reaching out to them. So for us, they waived the bank transfer fee entirely for our batch remittances. Um, depending on like how much, uh, how good your relationship is, you might want to see what they could do for you because you definitely can do the cheaper three-day bank transfer, which is very inexpensive, or you can save yourself a couple days and see if they'll waive the fee on the quicker one. So um, just a shout out for that strategy. And then also just one more thing. I know Nathan won't say it, but he is so helpful. So if you have... <laughs> any questions at all, any kind of glitchy, weird, you don't understand how something's working and you reach out to him, he is enormously helpful. So that's, I think, another selling point for using Batch. Thank you. I'm blushing. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm visibly blushing at this point. Um, another, just another quick note about regarding payments. Um, I know some, they're like some small banks, uh, sometimes credit unions, to send an electronic bank transfer can be a hassle. Um, and you know, ideally it wouldn't be a hassle. Um, but there is a service called Melio Payments. And this is something that can integrate with QuickBooks Online if you're using that. Melio Payments, it's free to send ACH transfers. Um, it's really easy. You link your bank to Melio and uh, away you go. Normal ACH transit times. Um, so yeah, if you have trouble with your bank in, in terms of getting that set up, uh, Melio is an option. Um, and I, another thing that I'll mention is that if you are sending us a bank uh, a payment and your bank is charging you a fee, uh, one, I think using Batch, you're going to save a ton of time where, you know, it's going to be worth the monthly fee. Um, but, you know, you might not think so. Uh, so for that reason, Batch will, for, for at least the first six months you're on Batch, we'll cover one bank fee per month. Uh, that you use batch, whether that's a wire fee or a bank transfer fee. Um, yeah, we will we will cover uh, one bank fee uh, per month. Um, so yeah. Also, Nathan, aren't you going to be at WI? I will. I'm, so if every uh, oh, I imagine a lot of you folks are going to be at Winter Institute, considering it's in, in the West Coast this year. Uh, if you are at Winter Institute, uh, batch is going to be everywhere. We are. We're going to be at the vendor showcase, which used to be called a consultation station. So we'll have a, a booth there. You can come by, see the platform, get chat with us. Um, we are going to be uh, doing an education session at Batch uh, at Winter Institute as well. Uh, let me let me find a link for the education session. Uh, so uh, for for the education session, um, we will we have we'll have me and a couple of booksellers on board. Um, and we, we'll have a U.S. bookseller and actually a bookseller from the U.K. Who's, who's been using it for years, and um, they will, you know, like this, they will talk about their experience with Batch and um, provide provide their perspective as well. 
Um, we will also be doing one-on-ones uh, so at, at uh, Winter Institute. Um, so let me let me get the link. Like, if you're going to be at Winter Institute and you want to schedule a time to uh, for a one-on-one -on -one meeting, we have some things going on. Let me out here. I found them. Let me uh, check. So I'm going to do two different links. They, they're going to look the same, but I, I assure you they're, they're different. Um, let me see, yeah. Okay, so those are the two links for one-on-ones at Winter Institute. We have, we'll have uh, two time slots per, or two slots per time slot, uh, time period. Uh, I, I think you all know what I mean. And uh, so you can, uh, those are the links to, to schedule if you wanted a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, somebody asked, can you have different users with different rights on batch? Um, oh, Stephanie, sorry about that. Not someone, Stephanie asked that. Um, for example, for someone who receives but shouldn't have access to make payments. So we do have different access levels on batch. So we, we have you know, the administrator where they can do it all. They can authorize invoices, verify, and they, they can do everything. Uh, but then there's another level where they can only verify invoices. That's the only option. That that's all that's available to them. They they wouldn't be able to authorize invoices. Um, so yeah, uh, I stand by. We have, we do have some questions rolling in. Uh, somebody from one of the regional EDs, uh, Linda, asked about the recorded sessions. Um, it, or this session recorded. Or are are there any plans to share it? Oh, thank you, Anne. Okay, just just looking through the questions again. Um, I want to thank uh, um, Mary and Christine. Uh, do, do you all have anything to add at the end here? I uh, thanks so much. This has been really, really wonderful. The only thing I have to add is sign up so we can get Hachette to sign up. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I do want to thank all the, uh, the, the regional EDs for hosting this. This has been wonderful. This, is, this has been great. Um, and hopefully I will hear from many of you and, or, and see you at, uh, in Seattle next month. Exciting times. Much. Thank Nathan you, Nathan. And Mary and Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have fun.